Numiniki is occasionally described as a horror game, and this is not really true. Though it does have some elements that could be considered scary, and many interpretations are quite dark, it is simply a surreal and abstract exploration game. The same cannot be said for Dark Flow. Today on the Panopticon Theatre, we will dive into the rust-covered dream of Flow and look at some theories about its equally unclear story. <laughs> flow, or Dot Flow, though throughout this video I will omit the dot, was one of the first ever fan games created in the style of Yuminiki, created by LOL. It has the same general premise, explore a strange world and collect effects which change the character's appearance or give certain skills. Flow is a little different though. The main character of this game is Sabitsuki, a white-haired girl who, much like Madotsky, is for some reason locked in a room. Sabitsuki's name, like her original counterpart, is more of a word than a traditional name. It means rusted or rusting. Her white hair and the red eyes she's depicted with in art by a lol suggest she may have some form of albinism. Her room is very similar to Madotsky's, but everything looks a lot more grim and grimy. The sky outside is completely black, with odd red shapes moving in the distance and the glass of the sliding door is cracked, rusted pipes crawling out of the unit on the balcony. Suffice to say, it's pretty clear from the start that Flo is going to be a lot darker than Yuminiki at face value. There's one major difference though, and that's that instead of sleeping to access the dream world, you now sleep to save, and instead, the computer is your access point to the core of the game. Because of this, it's hard to say that the world we access is a dream world, so I'll just call it the other world. The game seems to be a lot more digital, even at the start, we see Sabitsky glitching and fuzzing like a computer error, and the Nexus vaguely resembles a circuit board. Because of this, it's often interpreted that the other world is more of a digital recreation of Sabitsky's subconscious in some way instead of a classic dream. The locations of the other world are generally slightly more realistic too. There are locations like a school and a hospital, however, they're still generally rather abstract. There are some areas of the game that are inaccessible. Walking up to the doors will cause any effects you have on you to drop and a static fill the screen. Effects are scattered throughout and generally have very simple changes to Sabitsky's appearance or give her certain abilities, similar to Yumaniki. The most important one is analogous to Madotsky's knife. Your weapon in this world is a rusty iron pipe. The effects are often a little darker and gorier. Viscera makes your guts fall out and you can press shift to try and pull them back inside. Corpse literally turns you into a corpse and Dadoma removes your arms and legs and if you fall over you can't get back up, just crawling around on the ground. Flo also has a lot more recognisable NPCs. One of the most important, who you'll see many times, is a boy with pluses over his eyes. He's more commonly known in fandom by his file name, Smile, though Lol calls him brother in art. He appears to have a younger sister, a little girl hiding behind him. Another is Oreko, a girl in a diving mask who lives underwater. Yet another is Kleena, usually called the gas mask maid by fans, who you can tell from that nickname are maids wearing gas masks. The main enemies of this game are Kaibutsu, White-haired people with bloody and distorted faces, who giggle as they chase you. Kaibutsu translates to monster. Like Tori Ningen, they chase you down and lock you in an inescapable space, and you must exit the other world to leave. As you progress through the game, certain events increase something called your erosion counter. As this counter goes up, bloodstains begin to appear in the real room, and a small, child version of Sabitsky in a hospital bed in the other world begins to deteriorate. Eventually, strange tube-like objects appear in Sabitsky's room, attached to the computer. You explore the world, gather the effects, then return to see the ending. Head straight outside, and Sabitsky will look over the railing. It goes black, then after a moment, a blood splatter can be seen. But that's not right, you need to put the effects down, right? You do that, then go outside. And as Sabitsky looks out, a cleaner walks out behind her. It fades to black, then the cleaner carries Sabitsky's limp body away. Is that it? No, those are two of the three endings, the rooftop and maid endings, as they're called. But there is a third ending, usually called the true ending. After you've put all the effects down, you head back into the other world. Now, you are rust. The kaibutsu are gone, replaced with red demon-like things called fetuses, that instead of locking you in an inescapable area, do damage to you. This damage is very visible, as you slowly deteriorate, and eventually literally fall apart with a spurt of blood. Rust cannot use effects, you drop them off after all, but can access those areas that Sabitsky was unable to. In these locations, Rust can find three... nothings. These empty text boxes, generally called empty boxes, allow you to access the true ending. Once these are gathered, you return to your room, where an elevator awaits. 
Descending the elevator lets you out into a steadily worsening hallway of horrors, a white hall like a hospital that grows red and meaty and bloody as you travel. At the end, in a blood-red room, you find Sabitsky, and you beat her to death with your pipe. Then you wake and head out. The cleaner returns, this time with a chainsaw, but Sabitsky smiles wildly and approaches. The cleaner chainsaws Sabitsky, cutting her legs off. She carries away the limp body, then we see it sitting legless and bleeding in the dark. The screen glitches and cuts out. It seems pretty clear that these three endings are the same sequence of events, just seen in separate parts. But what does this all mean or represent? Let's get into it. It's quite obvious to see the themes of disease throughout the game. Many theories revolve around the idea that Sabitsky is suffering from some sort of disease. Whatever disease it is, is often referred to by fans as Rust, for pretty clear reasons. There's quite a few factors that support this interpretation. Firstly, the most obvious is the child Sabitsky in the hospital ward. She's clearly bedridden and sick. As the erosion counter rises, she becomes more and more deteriorated, clearly drawing a link between the erosion counter and her illness. How about Sabitsky's room? Whenever her erosion counter rises, more blood begins to appear on her floor, and eventually these tubes appear. This seems to be a pretty clear representation of the progress of the disease. The tubes could be some form of medical equipment, and the blood could be from her coughing up or otherwise expelling blood, perhaps due to the trauma of her experiences in the other world affecting her physically. Certain events, nightmares, only occur when the counter is high, meaning that she might be starting to hallucinate, which is common on certain medications or with fevers. It may also explain why she's shut away in her room. She's in isolation, as her illness may be either infectious or due to her own immune system being weakened by it to the point that she can't interact with the outside world for her own safety. It may also explain the gas mask cleaners. We'll talk a little more about them later, but it's possible the mask represents some form of protective ventilation equipment. Various elements inside the other world are tied to illness as well. There's the obvious ones, of course, like the doctor and nurse characters in the alleyway hospital and the dead or dying ill children you can find in the lowest level of the hospital, the parade ward. Some of these children look a lot like the kaibutsu. Some theories suggest that the kaibutsu are other sufferers of the disease. Child Sabitsuki can be found here, suggesting this may represent a place she was hospitalized at. Child Oreko can also be found in this hospital. We'll talk about her later too. Another area, the hospital maze, may represent a different hospital. Or perhaps the feeling of being in a hospital, especially as a child, led around a place of blank white walls with no sense of direction, leading to this maze-like feeling. Rust, the character, not the illness, is often interpreted to be Sabitsky after reaching a very late stage of her illness, while the illness is taking over in some psychological way. The pre-true ending scene, where Rust heads down that corridor and kills the version of Sabitsky there, could therefore be Rust killing whatever is left of Sabitsky and taking over completely, or perhaps indicate Rust breaching her immune system's last line of defense. The Onigo, the black-haired girls as they're commonly called in English, are often theorized to represent the immune system. Particularly, let's look at the Dying Girls event. In this event, you'll see nine Onigo explode before a large one on the wall spills out viscera from her stomach. This large Onigo is sometimes theorized to be Sabitsuki's mother dying in childbirth, which is possible, and we'll talk more about that later in the video, but can also be tied to another idea. I think maybe if we do take the Onigo to represent the immune system, this large one could represent the disease starting the stomach or reproductive organs, and this scene could be the illness destroying part of the immune system. That's just my take though. I personally also think the fetuses might represent part of the immune system, but rather than the onigo, who may represent B lymphocytes, which are the ones that send the signal to the body that something is wrong, I think the fetuses may represent T lymphocytes, or phagocytes, which basically are the ones that attack the pathogens. Thusly, they attack rust, as rust is to the disease, but not Sabitsky, who is the normal body state, aside from in one area. They can be found in the deranged mouth world, but they don't even kill Sabitsky here, they just deactivate her effects. It's not until the disease takes over that they become dangerous, as they now recognize you as Rust as a threat. As for the disease itself, it's debatable whether it represents a real disease or a fantasy one. It seems to be some sort of wasting disease. It could be representing something real, like for example necrotizing fasciitis, which I won't show a picture of as it's pretty grim, but basically it's a bacteria that causes parts of the body's soft tissue to die. It does make the skin look a little bit like it's rusting away. It can cause fever, which could explain the hallucinations we discussed. Amputation for severe cases is sometimes necessary, which might be an explanation for our chainsaw ending, and also the machine girl and machine effect, which replace limbs, and the other effects that remove or change limbs. I think if I had to suggest a real-life disease that Rust could represent, necrotizing fasciitis would be my best suggestion. However, it's not really that accurate. 
First of all, it doesn't really spread to other people that well. Many takes on flow suggests that the other hospital children and Kaibutsu are also sufferers, meaning that it would have to be a sickness with relatively good chance of spreading to hit that many people. It's also been suggested that it turns the hair white as we see children with various hair colors, but only the adult Kaibutsu we see have white hair. NF doesn't do this, obviously. It also wouldn't make sense with the gas masks as it's not airborne, but of course these could just represent general hospital safety equipment. However, these are all things we assume the illness does, so I don't know really. It's possible that it's a variation on the classic zombie infection, since if we assume the Kaibutsu are also sufferers, they do seem to become violent and aggressive. Many people suggest Sabitsuki is becoming a Kaibutsu over the course of the game, and if we look at it that way, it does seem like some sort of progressing zombie type infection. Some people also interpret the disease as an STD. Some STDs can be passed from a pregnant mother to a baby, and it would certainly explain the potential social stigma we see Sabitsuki experience if people found out about it. STDs don't generally cause the level of damage we see to the body though, and it doesn't really explain a lot of the other elements like the Kaibutsu. Regardless, it's definitely clear that disease of some form is a large part of Flo's narrative. Let's now explore some of the characters in the world, and how they might fit into Sabitsuki's reality. Oriko's name is a shortening of Orangiko or Orange Child. She's small and barefoot, wearing an orange diving helmet, and she can be seen quite a few times throughout the game, usually in water areas, but also a younger, helmetless version of her can be seen in the hospital. She has a unique friendship meter that can be raised or lowered based on Sabitsuki's actions. Oriko may be or may have been a friend of Sabitsuki's, suffering from the same disease, or perhaps a different one but in the same hospital. I wonder if her diving helmet is intended to represent some sort of medical equipment. Medical equipment can appear similar to this, particularly old fashioned stuff like the iron lung, a negative pressure ventilator often used in the mid 1900s for treatments for things like polio. Doesn't it sort of look like a submarine part? It's possible then that it's meant to represent some sort of ventilator equipment, perhaps also explaining her association with water. Lung issues can cause or be caused by water in the lungs, and can make breathing sound rattly and wet. It's also possible it's meant to represent something to keep her isolated from the outside environment if she has a weakened immune system. It could be a sterile protective covering. Personally, it could be something protecting others from her spreading something to them, if we consider this resting condition to be contagious. Either way, it seems pretty clear that she's associated with the hospital time of Sabitsky's early life. Her dress style and barefootness also look a lot like pretty standard patient getup, and like Sabitsky, she is seen in one of the large glass tubes. I rather suspect Oriko is dead. For one, if you raise her friendship meter enough, you can see a ghost version of her through which you can obtain her menu skin. Perhaps more damningly, is the event you can see with her as Rust, whilst in an area called the Dead Hole. This area really seems to be some sort of corpse disposal area, but with the body swinging by on meat hooks, perhaps loosely representing a hospital morgue. If you go here as Rust, you can see Oracle walking down to the bottom of this hole, where she then disappears. The hospital version of her dies when she becomes Rust too. So, for Oriko, I personally think she's a friend Sabitsky made as a child at hospital, who likely died during the time Sabitsky was there. Smile is a black haired boy, who gives the tattoo effect when interacted with. He can be found in quite a few areas of the game, and appears pretty relevant to Sabitsky's story. He can be found in the slums area with Sister, who hides behind him. Here, he'll laugh and pull out a weapon if you equip the pipe effect. He can be seen in the school, most notably on the roof, which is where you can get the tattoo effect from him. He can also be seen in the corrupted school basement. Here, if you're Sabitsky, he will kill you with his hammer, but if you're Rust, you will kill him with the pipe. Finally, a version of him can be seen in the disposal area, wearing a gakuron, which is a style of school uniform. He doesn't seem to have those tattoos here, so many suspect this is a younger version of him. How exactly Smile relates to Sabitsky is unknown, but we can extrapolate a few things. As you see him primarily in the school and in uniform, it seems that he's associated with Sabitsky's teenage years. Some people suggest that he was a friend of Sabitsky's at school, who either became popular or fell in with the wrong crowd, as he's often surrounded by other students. Tattoos in Japan are very heavily associated with gangs, and that coupled with the fact that he apparently carries a hammer suggests to me that he may have gotten involved with gangs or at least delinquents. The house he and sister seem to live in is very run down and small, so it's possible he got involved in this as a way to make money or keep sister safe. It's possible that Sabitsky also got involved with these crowds, going off the black hoodie, pipe, handgun, and tattoo effects, but to me it seems that Smile is often separated from her, and it feels to me more like he's someone that she either used to be or wanted to be close to, but can no longer reach, represented by the physical barriers often between them, and the fact that your only real options with him are to threaten or attack him or be attacked by him. 
maybe she was involved and something happened that caused him to fall out. The fact that Sister seems scared of Savitsky suggests to me that she knows something about Savitsky to want to avoid her, either based on her sickness or because of something that happened between Savitsky and Smile. This character doesn't have a file name or fan nickname, and Girl in the Yellow Dress is very unwieldy to say, so in this video I'll be calling her Sato, meaning Sugar, to go with her original nickname, Sugar Girl. Sato is a black haired woman wearing a pale coloured dress. She can be found in the deterioration area and two other places, the apartments and vomit girl areas. To access these last two, Sabitsuki must eat cake at the sugar hole bar a number of times across different flow sessions. In deterioration, she's sitting on the ground smoking. She can also be found down the hall in one of the blocked off rooms sitting at a table. Younger Sabitsuki is also in this room, standing away from the table. To access her in the vomit girl area, five rounds of cake need to be eaten. Sabitsuki must interact with a whole faced maid, who will have a chance to teleport you to the vomit girl area. This area is… weird. It's full of rather suggestive statues of women, which may be made of sugar considering the way they look and the naming scheme in the game, and the background music has some… interesting sounds in it. Here's a snippet. At the end of this area, you can find a cliff, on the edge of which stands Sato. Giant hands block access to her. Finally, you can see her in the apartments in what is usually called the Sugar Float Days event, as that is the name of the room it takes place in. Ten rounds of cake is required for this. In the newly accessible room, Sabitsuki and Sato can seem to be having tea together at a table, rather like the one in deterioration. To explain who I personally think Sato is, we have to discuss a different point, Sabitsuki's history, which I think is abstractly displayed in the deterioration rooms. Deterioration is an area that features multiple blue-toned apartments with small scenes in them. There are four apartments going from zero to three. It looks to me like they show a chronology of Sabitsky's life. Let's go through them one by one. Room zero shows a bed with an IV next to it. In the center of the room is a toppled large vase with white lilies inside it, which is smashed at the bottom and leaking a reddish fluid. A small wriggling red shape can be seen a little ways away from it. I believe this scene shows, in a vague way, Sabitsky's birth. The red shape is certainly very fetus-like, and the visual of the split vase is… pretty obvious. Combining this with the dying girl's event we discussed earlier, it looks to me like Sabitsky's mother died in childbirth. White lilies generally represent purity, innocence, and rebirth, though white flowers also often represent death. Room 1, as we discussed, features Sato and a young Sabitsky. We'll come back to this in just a second. Room 2 shows Sabitsky sitting on the floor of the room, surrounded by bottles, some of which are spilled and general trash. There's a pair of scissors on the ground in front of her, surrounded by what may be paper scraps. She's holding the iron pipe. This seems to be a dark part of Sabitsky's life. The bottles are likely meant to be alcohol and she's got the pipe out. The paper scraps could be a few things, a cut up photo of someone or some sort of destroyed documentation. It's clearly something she wanted to get rid of. Holding the pipe suggests she might not feel safe. Room 3 can only be seen by Rust. Sabitsky sits at a PC, and the kaibutsu with a pipe stalks around the room. You have to go in and out a few times to see it move around. In the last instance of it, it approaches the barrier in front of the door and starts banging on it. The presence of the kaibutsu who is clearly aware of the player in the scene suggests to me this is modern day Sabitsky, when Rust is beginning to take hold of her mental state. The other scenes were pretty much just static memories, but this one features an active, current threat. So, to go back to our discussion point, who is Sato? Well, I personally think she was an adoptive mother or caretaker to Sabitsky. We see her with a young Sabitsky after her mother dies, likely taking care of her. Why? Well, I think the environment speak for her here. We find her at the end of a very sexually themed area that we access by possibly going into a girl in an area that's clearly intended to be read as a love hotel, and we find her surrounded by imagery of grasping hands. She's dressed very cutely, if simply, but we see her sitting outside smoking in a dark, dirty hallway. I suspect she may have been a sex worker, and I also suspect Sabitsky's mother to have been one as well. There's a few bits of sexual imagery throughout the game, and it doesn't seem particularly directed at Sabitsky herself. My personal theory on Sato, and thusly on Sabitsky's early life, is that Sabitsky's mother was a sex worker who died in childbirth, likely with nobody there to look after her, and Sato, a fellow sex worker, took Sabitsky in to take care of her. It seems like they may have had a good relationship going by the positive feeling of the Sugar Float Days event, Sabitsky seems to look back on it with fondness. But unfortunately, I highly suspect that Sato is also dead. The end of the Vomit Girl area shows her standing precariously close to the edge of a cliff, after being surrounded by this darkly sexual imagery. I think it's very likely that this is meant to reflect that she committed suicide. 
In the deterioration timeline, we see Sabit's skill bone with her voices with a cut up paper. Also, these memories of Sato are particularly tricky to reach and require a bit of work on your part. I wonder if Sabitsky felt angry and maybe betrayed by Sato's suicide, which are pretty common responses to losing a loved one that way, and she shut away her memories of her deep in her mind, destroying her physical reminders of her like photos and such. One of the effects, dress, also has Sabitsky wear a black dress, like one might wear at a funeral or in mourning. This is stretching the thread a little, but we have very little to go off, and personally, I think this is a very reasonable interpretation of what we're given. Of course, Sato herself could also be Sabitsky's mother, but the death in childbirth imagery is pretty intense, so I'm more on the adopter side. Regarding the rust disease, we did look at the idea that it could be an STD, and whilst I don't personally think it is one, I do think this gives us a good explanation as to where it potentially came from, if so. Other diseases can be transferred to a baby in the womb as well, so it's still possible Sabitsky got rust because of her mother. Finally on this topic, it's interesting that if Sabitsky looks at herself in the mirror in the Sweet Sugar Hotel, she sees herself seemingly topless despite clearly wearing a shirt. A reflection of her growing up surrounded by sex workers considering herself as a sexual object perhaps? These gas mask maids can be found in quite a few places. They generally fill the roles of polite servers, particularly in the Sugar Hole Bar. They stand behind desks to serve you food and bow in response to you. They're interesting in that aside from Sabitsky, they're the only ones we can pretty much confirm exist in Sabitsky's real world, or rather at least one of them does. One of the cleaners stands directly next to the painting that gives you access to the Darum effect, which causes Sabitsky to have no limbs and bleeding stumps, which is very clear foreshadowing to the ending. Their role and purpose is very unclear, but they're still clearly very important. I wonder if they're just sort of stagehands meant to fulfill a specific role in the other world? The gas mask may be to protect them from the disease. Some people think they are some sort of group whose job is to either help sufferers with the disease, or take out people who fall too far into it and become kaibutsu, like Sabitsky seems to at the end. It would be weird if a general caretaker just carried around a chainsaw after all. Within the other world, they primarily seem to be working at the sugar hole. Whilst we're on the topic, there's a theory that the food served at the bar is made of people. It's right next to the morgue after all, and if you attack the bar kaibutsu, it does seem like it might be shoved into an oven of some kind. The three empty boxes she collects as rust are interesting, and I think they may represent particularly traumatic moments of Sabitsky's life. The first is in the same place as the Dying Girls event, and you get the box by clicking on the bleeding on your go on the wall. It's pretty straightforward going off what we discussed before. The second is from this big tube containing a floating Sabitsky. It's got a very incubatory vibe to it. I wonder if it's meant to represent the time at the hospital as an abstract depiction of medical treatment, or of being isolated in a sterile environment particularly as we also see Otoko in a tube, and we know that she was also in the hospital. Finally, we have the one in the school basement. You get it by interacting with this lovely grid on the wall. I think it's pretty obvious that this one connects to Smile somehow. There's a notable contrast between the reoccurring flower imagery and the reoccurring industrial imagery. It feels like the idea of industry encroaching on nature, which in turn feels like the idea of the foreign disease encroaching on a natural body. Oriko's association with machinery is something that I can't really fit into the rest of my theorizing. Perhaps she was experimented on to find a cure for her illness, resulting in her being given mechanical parts, or maybe she was just really into machines. The title, Dot Flow, is often assumed to mean the psychological idea of a flow state, or the idea of being in the zone. This could be what Sabitsuki is experiencing when she enters the other world. I did try and figure out if it could mean anything else, since it seemed like everyone had the idea and stuck with it, but there's not really much I can think of that it might mean. Well, flow in Japanese will be pronounced furo, and ofro means bath, which contrasts cleanliness with the idea of rust and dirt. That's kind of a stretch though. <laughs> flow can only barely be called more clear than Yumaniki, but the themes and symbolism in this game are incredibly powerful. As someone who also suffers from a significant chronic illness, it really hit me quite hard when I first played it again after many years. Not many games tackle that subject in this way. And there's just something about pixelated gore that's even creepier than realistic stuff, since your brain has to fill in the gaps. I enjoyed Flow. It's one of the few popular Yumeniki fan games that adds a really new, interesting twist to the concept. It's incredibly visceral and grimy, and captures a feeling that honestly not many games do for me. I've never quite felt the need to have a shower after playing a game before. Well anyway, what do you think? Do you agree with my analysis, or did you have a different take on Sabisuke's story? There's so much up for speculation, as with all Yumeniki inspired games, and I'd love to hear your ideas and different theories. Let me know down below, and let me know if there's any other Yumeniki fan games you might like me to talk about. Thanks for watching today's Panopticon Theatre performance. What do you think? Did I miss anything? What do you want me to talk about next? 
make sure to sub and join the audience if you want to see more.